let's get started. And uh, once again, uh, thank you to all the advisors for joining us uh, today. And it's either a good morning or a good afternoon to our advisors uh, across Canada uh, joining us. Uh, those of you that uh, I have not met, once again, my name is Alex Chan. I'm the Regional Wealth Leader for Western Canada at IDC WorldSource. I am joined today by my esteemed colleague, Graham Allen, who is the Regional Wealth Leader for the East. And we are part of the banking and wealth team that is, of course, headed by Jason Payne out of the Maritimes. And of course, our National Director of uh, uh, Banking Services, uh, Vic Ray, uh, based out of uh, BC uh, as, as well. So once again, it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome everybody. And this is actually uh, session uh, three of three. And again, uh, uh, thanks again for those advisors that joined us for the first uh, two sessions. And Claudette and her team advised that the uh, follow-ups will start uh, next week. Again, just to follow up on, on the training that uh, everyone has, uh, has, has gone through. And once again, if there's any questions, uh, put them into the, uh, to the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them. And of course, uh, session one, uh, Claudette talked about uh, business practices and covered uh, many topics there. And in section two, Claudette went into very in-depth about uh, investments, the different types of investments. And today she's going to go over getting started with writing investment business uh, with Assumption Life. And she's going to cover electronic versus paper applications, uh, seg funds versus the uh, registered investment accounts with low fees at Assumption, uh, traditional portfolios, smart series and select portfolios. And she's also going to talk about compensation at Assumption Life because uh, at IDC World Source, we do compensate you for segregated fund business. And again, uh, Claudette's going to fill your briefcase with one pagers that she's going to share with you. And again, she's going to show you the benefit of building up equity in a seg fund portfolio, which is also a very valuable uh, piece of business to sell when you uh, retire. Uh, once again, uh, any questions, enter them into the chat box. Um, you know, Claudette and her team and Graham and myself, we will follow up as well. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Claudette, I'll hand it over to you. And of course, uh, Claudette is the National Director of Investments and Retirement at Assumption Life. So over to you, Claudette. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, welcome, everybody, and thank you for being here. As Alex said, this will be part three of series three. So it's our last time spending an hour together. So again, we're gonna go on, going beyond selling life insurance. Today, we're gonna to cover what is an investment portfolio, target date funds, the power of the pack, fees, specialty and sector funds, RIA and seg funds, compensation, and then we're gonna wrap it up with Vesta, filling your briefcase and doing the wrap up of all the three series. What is an investment portfolio? Portfolios, you want to avoid timing the market. So this is not a strategy you wanna attempt is trying to time the market because it's the worst strategy you can take with your clients. Portfolios diversify your assets with investment options such as stocks, bonds, cash, ETFs, mutual funds, segregated funds, and GIAs. Good diversification lessens the impact of major fluctuations in the market. It is best to diversify based on your investor's time, timeline, risk tolerance, and their financial goals. Let's take a look at asset allocation. So you have cash and cash equivalents, you have your fixed income, and you have your equities. Within your equities, you have international equities, U.S. equities, and Canadian equities. There are different types of portfolios. So you'll find some portfolios that have Canadian exposure with bonds. You'll have some that will have international exposure with bonds. You have actively managed uh, portfolios, and you also have passively managed portfolios, and they usually use index funds. 
Actively managed portfolios. What they are, an actively managed portfolio have portfolio managers that use expertise to drive success of the portfolio through research and market forecasting. And then you have your passive investments. Your passively managed portfolio typically includes returns that reflect a market index. These types of portfolios adopt a more hands-off approach. I wanted to show you the different indices because a lot of times you'll be selling the segregated fund. Most segregated funds will have an index that they either track or they'll put them in a category. So it could be the TSX S&P 500, it could be the, uh, the S&P 500 alone, it could be the Dow Jones, it could be the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ tracks all of your technologies. It could be the Russell 3000 or the MSCI. There's hundreds of different indices. So I just wanted to make sure you realize that market indexes or benchmarks, this is what they mean when they're tracking that inside a segregated fund. Let's take a look at risk. Risk is the uncertainty of losing your investment amount. So this is the loss perspective on the risk side or unpredictability of performance, which is the volatility perspective. Risk tolerance is the degree of volatility the investor is willing to accept. So what kind of risk is your client willing to take? Without volatility, there's no risk. Without risk, there is minimal reward. So the more risk you take, on average, technically, the higher your return you should see in your portfolio. Meet Jackie. She's a marketing professional. She has a very busy life. She knows when she wants to retire. She knows the importance of investing, but lacks the time and knowledge to do it by herself. She likes to set it and forget it. So she doesn't want to meet on an annual basis to rebalance her portfolio. She basically wants to put money outside for retirement, set it and forget it. She's an ideal candidate for portfolios. Let's talk about diversification and asset allocation. It's the key to success. Diversification is an investing strategy that helps the investor mitigate risk and minimize risk. Instead of exposing, like your vitamin C, to only one single asset, you're taking a vitamin C, you're not getting the benefit of all the multivitamins, diversify across a wide variety of investments. And we're going to talk a little bit about that when we talk about the cash, the bonds, the fixed income, and the equities. So by diversifying, you're going to buy separate companies, you're going to diversify by asset class, and you're also going to diversify by industries. This is probably one of my favorite charts about not being able to time the markets. So diversification is key and this is why. If you take a look at the dark blue, those are all like the large cap equity. If you take a look at the green, it's all your real estate. If you take a look at the, the, the lighter, well, I guess that was teal. If you take a look at the light green, it's your fixed income in the USA. What this chart shows is that it's very difficult to time the markets because different categories do well at different times. Of, of each year, depending on the economic cycle. So if you take a look at this and you were thinking, oh, I'm going to buy large caps, I'm going to go buy a large cap equity, you can see that in 2002, down at the bottom, it was its worst year ever. So this is what you look at when you're trying to time the markets. And this is why I tell clients, it's very difficult to time the markets. If we all could time the markets, we would all be wealthy. And I showed you in series two that Canadians are in a deficit. So the best thing is, is to do the questionnaire, get your client's risk tolerance and stick with your client's risk tolerance. Whether the markets go up, down or sideways, you really want to get to their asset allocation that they're prepared to take by doing the investor profile questionnaire. I wanted to show you different portfolios. So as I mentioned, there's conservative portfolios, there's balance, there's growth, there's aggressive growth. You can take a look at a conservative investor. So this would be somebody that doesn't want a lot of risk, but wants to take on a little bit of risk. Their portfolio would look like 80% bonds and 20% equities. If you have a client that was young, they're 22 years old, they really want to start saving. They say, you know what, I'm going to sleep at night. I'm not going to look at this. Then you would go to possibly the aggressive growth, if that's what their questionnaire would say. You can see it's almost the complete opposite of conservative. It has 95% equities and 5% bonds. Let's take a look at the target days, date funds versus target risk. Target date, target date portfolios follow a glide path that makes the asset allocation more conservative over time. 
So if your client was young and they want to retire at 2055, the portfolio would be aggressive as they're young. However, it would automatically rebalance to conservative automatically for the day they retire in 2055. The target risk is a little different. A target risk portfolio has an asset allocation best suited to investors' risk tolerance. However, it's not going to become conservative over time. So if they scored growth on the investor profile questionnaire today, in 20 years, if you have done nothing with that client, that client is still in the growth portfolio. So completely different, target date versus target risk. We have 18 prepackaged solutions for you. They're both available in our RIA and in our site funds. If you take a look at our nine target date funds, and we have nine portfolio solutions, we have four that are our traditional portfolios that have been around for a very long time. And last year, we created the select portfolios. And the difference between the two is the select portfolios have more global diversification, almost twice as much bonds and equities on the global side. This is what our portfolios look like. So these are our traditional portfolios. They're 100% actively managed and they do have more of a Canadian bias. So if you take a look at the conservative, we're gonna, we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the conservative versus the growth. So you can see the conservative portfolio, very conservative, not a lot of equities. You can see there's not a lot of green, red and yellow. When we go to the growth portfolio, you can see it's, it has more equities because there's not a lot of blue. So there's not a lot of fixed income when we're looking at the growth portfolios. So we need to make sure that we put the clients in the right asset allocation so that they can sleep at night. And so that when the markets do take a correction and they're volatile like the last you know, few months, your phone's not ringing off the hook of why am I in this? It's going down. Once you do that investor profile questionnaire, it will guide you. It will help you through those conversations. Here are our select portfolios. They're actively and passively managed. So we do have some ETFs in there. We have BlackRock in there, Vanguard in there. And again, like I mentioned, it has twice as much global exposure on both the bonds and equity side. If you can take a look at, again, we'll use the select defensive versus the select enhanced growth. You can see that the green, red, and yellow are our equities on the select growth. You can see we have a lot more of that on a more aggressive portfolio. And the other thing you can see with the yellow and red is that those are our more global diversification versus Canada, Canadian equity that's in green. So that's why I'm saying it's got double the global exposure. Again, we have great fund managers. Like I mentioned, we have Black, BlackRock, iShares, and Vanguard for the passive investments. We have Louis Boa and Fidelity on the active side. Great high caliber managers, Louis Boa, Fidelity, Vanguard, and BlackRock. Target date funds are also known, you're gonna hear in the industry when we talk about investment jargon, you'll hear that the target date funds, they can be known as life, life cycle funds, dynamic risk funds, or age-based funds. They're commonly used in RESPs. So you'll see a lot of people that when they're purchasing RESPs, they like the target date. They're going to say, my child's going to school in 20 years, so it can be a bit more aggressive today. And then as the child gets closer to school, then it's going to be automatically very conservative for when the, client, when the, when the, student, when the child starts school. And a lot of clients use these as well for retirement. Some of the clients that do not want to rebalance annually, they're the let it do itself. It will rebalance automatically. I don't want to do this every year with you. Group retirement plans, they often use target date funds, especially as a default fund. So if you're in the group retirement space, um, you always need a default fund for group plans. So a lot of the group plans, their default option are the target date funds. It became popular in Canada for group investments around the year 2000. And Assumption Life came out with them in 2018. We had them on our group side and we moved them over to our individual side. So they're available for you both on our group side and on our individual site fund side and our IA side. Again, how do the target date works? Target date funds use an asset allocation formula that adjusts the investor that adjusts as the investor approaches closer to their target date. So you can use them, let's say a client's 25 and he says, I want to buy a boat at age 40. You can use target dates for those as well. Most of the time it's for RESPs and retirement. 
The benefits are they're professionally managed. So you, you have a hands-off approach. There's flexibility to adjust the target date. So let's say somebody said, I'm going to retire at 65 and they change their date to 60. We can adjust the dates by changing them to the, the more conservative portfolio. And they're very low maintenance. It's like I said, you won't have to rebalance them every year. They're automatically re rebalanced for you. Here's our smart series. We have our income. We have our 2020. As I'm going up, the more aggressive it will go, our 2030. And then, of course, our 2035, 40, 45, 50, and 55. So we have nine target date funds, depending on when the client wants it. When I show you Vesta, you'll see, you don't see it, but in, in behind the scenes of Vesta, there's actually a formula that I'm going to talk about on the next slide. And this formula guides you to choose what fund would be appropriate for my client. As you can see, the arrows pointing downwards, like I mentioned, 2055 will eventually become the 2020 to the income fund because you want your client's assets to be conservative when they need the money. Here's our glide path. So this is a marketing piece that we created. It's a one pager, it's available to you. Put it in your briefcase. What it shows is in 2055, you can see the bonds, there's only 5% bonds, and you can see the equities are 95%, a little bit less than that because we have 2% alternatives, but let's just use 95 to five. And what, what this shows is over time, it's a great sheet to show your clients. You show them that over time, it will ro roll over to more bonds as you move to the 2020 and as you move to the uh, Smart Series Income Fund. So you can see once the client needs the money, they're 57% in bonds versus when they started it that they needed it in 2055, where they were only 5% bonds. So the portfolio automatically becomes conservative over time. Again, this is Jackie. Again, she's a professional. She's busy. She knows when she wants to retire. She knows the importance of investing while she's young. Again, she wants to set and forget it. The smart series would be a per perfect portfolio for her. And there's one question to ask. So this is the question. When do you need the money? Because that's the important question. So how the formula works, it looks at current year. What year are we in? What's the target age? So she'll say, I want to retire at 65. What's her current age today? Her age. And then it will bring you to a smart series. What this formula looks like for her, she's 36 years old. So 2022, she wants to retire at 65, minus her current age, brings us to 2051. So what we do when it comes out to 2051, we take the closest one. So 2051, we would put her in the 2050 uh, smart series. Now, if it came to 2052, you'd have the conversation with your client about risk. If they want to take on more risk, you would move them to the 2055. These are all conversations that will become easy as you learn investments. So we created this one page, and you're going to be able to see it more in the next slides. It's basically one document that covers all of our portfolios. You can see here the smart series. You can see then the next page is the traditional portfolios. And then you can see we have the select portfolios. How this works is we break down each portfolio so that you know exactly what your client's going in. So if we take a look at the select portfolios, here's how they're diversified. If you look at, uh, let's take uh, select growth. It's 23.7% in fixed income and it's 76.3% in equities. So it gives you the actual breakdown of all five portfolios. And then under the equities, when I look at 76.3, it tells me how much is in Canada, how much is in the US, and how much is international. Again, on this one pager, again, still in the select portfolios, it gives you exactly which fund and what percentage is in each. So if you look at the Vanguard total bond market, it has 4.5% in the select growth portfolio. And again, what I like about this one pager, it's going to tell you is this portfolio 100% actively managed or is there some passive management in it? So if you look at select growth, it's 67% actively managed and 32.3% passively managed. So it's a really nice document when you're with your clients, you can show them what you're in once they do that questionnaire and it will guide you to which portfolio to choose. Another one pager for your briefcase, this is one called strong portfolios, outstanding returns. I can tell you, we just did an evaluation in May on our portfolios. All 18 portfolios are doing fantastic in the market. 
some of them in number one position in the market. So all these documents are for you. Fill your briefcase. When you meet your clients, you'll be able to show them, you know, all the benefits of them. And then in the section, it talks about the traditional portfolio, select portfolio, and the smart series. As I mentioned in series two, Canadians are in a deficit and we need to show them the power of the pack. Again, these are the statistics. 32% of Canadians aged 45 to 64 say they have no retirement savings. What an opportunity for you. 19% of the respondents had less than $50,000. It's estimated that we need 1 million to retire. And I don't know the way inflation's going today. Not quite sure that the 1 million will stay. Let's hope. So again, these are the Canadian stats. 69% of Canadians have an RSP account holding at age 45, $112,000. 58% of Canadians will rely on their government pensions. 90% of Canadians don't consider enough of their lifestyle. These are conversations that are fun. They'll tell you what they want to do during retirement. And when you leave, it gets them thinking about, okay, I need to start preparing for retirement. 60% of Canadians worry they will outlive their retirement savings. The power of the pack, I can tell you that your clients will tell you that they cannot afford it. I can't start packing now. I just bought a house. We, we just, you know, we have moving costs. We just have a new mortgage. We're nervous. We don't know how. Start them with a $50 pack on their payday. And every January, pick up the phone, give them a call and increase that pack. Once you start getting comfortable with investments, they possibly have 100000 sitting at the competition that you will be able to do the T2033 right inside of Vesta. So again, this page is showing the pack of 25, fill your briefcase, 25, 50, 75, 100, or 125 on a biweekly basis, 6% net return over 25 years. And I've increased the pack each year with, with our uh, index to inflation. However, that number could and may possibly have to change. Right now, it was at 2.25, and that's been over at least you know the last while, as far as I can remember. Other possible incomes in retirement that your clients may have. So again, get your clients contributing to their RSP. The other possible income streams that they may have is Canada Pension Plan. As you know, we all work, we get paid a salary, and we are all paying into CPP. Old age security, this kicks in at age 65. And we also have employer-sponsored pension plans. Your clients may have a pension plan at work. If they do, please know that even if they leave that employer, it's still a pension plan. It is still going to follow the guidelines of, of the Pension Act. Therefore, usually all the money is locked in. They may have over contribution and be able to move some to an RSP. However, all pension plans that are at work, when you leave, they go into a lira. Guaranteed income supplement. This is another thing that clients can qualify for. Uh, your, your income has to be quite low and you can only qualify for that at age 65. Give great advice and be part of the solution for Canadians. Help your clients retire comfortably. Let's talk about fees. I want you to understand the MERS on SEG funds, on mutual funds, and on the RIA. The management expense ratio is a percentage of the average dollar amount of a fund and covers a variety of fees. So when your clients, you have to disclose the fees, when they're talking about fees, at least this gives you an idea of what they cover. The, the MER covers your management fee, your operating expenses, plus your taxes are equal to your MER. Your management fee is your investment management and compensation, and your operating expenses are your guarantees and all your admin costs. So that's how, when you're talking with your clients, if ever they ask you questions, what is a MER? This is a great uh, example of what a MER is. Now, what we have here is, again, fill your briefcase. This is a document that's really good for you because you get to see the fees really quick. If you take a look at the top here, you can see segregated funds are to the left. This is a 75. The one popping out is a 75,100. And remember, I told you the RIA fees are lower. So you're going to see here to the right of this page is the RIA. If you take a look at the assumption balanced on the segregated 7575 Series H, the fee is 3.45. If you take a look at the RIA, the fee is 2.45. So you can see that you would save by using the RIA 1% for your clients. That's a lot of money over the long term compounding for your clients in their investment account. The other thing to note on this document, and I have another one coming up, you can see we show what's available in the SEG fund and the RIA. 
This happens to be all of our portfolios on the first part of this one pager. So it shows you that all the portfolios are available in both segregated funds and RIA. You will see on the coming pages that on the uh, individual investments, they're not uh, lined up. So I'm going to show you that so that you have a one quick pager that you will be able to see, okay, what's available in RIA, what's available in segregated funds. Here's just a quick glance at some of the fee differences. You can see if 75, 75 on the segregated fund side and then the RIA side. Again, balance growth 3.66 in the RIA, it's 2.55. So this is a significant savings for your clients. When doing financial planning, what returns do you use for your clients? So anytime you're doing a calculation, whether it's calculators, we have really simple calculators you can use on our website whether it's calculators or your financial plans, gross returns are the return before expenses or deductions. You should not use gross returns. You should be using your net returns because net returns is exactly what your client is receiving. It's returns after all fees have been deducted. So let's take a look at what does it mean keeping your client's buying power. So here's a net return of 6%. So you're, you're, you have a net return of 6% gross. So this is your gross return. However, the MER is 2.3. So what have your clients earned? 3.7, because the MER is 2.3. Now, what have they really earned if we want to keep up their buying power? If you look at the real rate of return, they've actually made, if you consider inflation at 2.5%, 1.2. So this is the power of making sure that your clients keep up with inflation and calculate their numbers on their net returns because that is actually what they are receiving. Your client's account grows with the after fee net returns. When you're doing all your calculations, please make sure to use your net returns for your clients. I wanted to show you this because as you get into investments and you're gonna be probably starting to look at uh, projections and things like that. This is just a projection income at retirement. So basically 2020 to 2044 approximately, uh, Mr. Client here is working, he's earning a salary. And then what the, the next to the right, what it's showing is it shows your CPP, it shows your old age security, it shows any pensions, and that probably includes their work pension as well as CPP and old age security. So it's great drafts once you get into investments that you'll be able to prepare for your clients to show them how they can build wealth until retirement day and then where will the money come from right up until the age of six. At 90, whatever age they want their plan made to. As I mentioned, there's specialty and sector funds. So sector funds are funds that invest solely in businesses that operate in a particular industry or economic sector. The most common sectors include energy, financial services, healthcare, precious metals, real estate, utilities, and technology. Again, these can be volatile funds if you're just choosing one of those funds, so if you want a great, well-diversified portfolio, make sure you're looking at your asset allocation to make sure you have a good diversification for your clients. Here's the other one pager that I was talking to you about. So this is on the same one pager. We have our individual funds. You can see here is where they start to not line up. We don't have everything in our segregated funds on the individual funds inside our RIA. So you can see if you look at fixed income Nui Bua, it is in both the segregated fund and the RIA. If you take a look at the Canadian uh, dividend fund, it is in our segregated side and our RIA. However, if you look at the Canadian asset allocation from Fidelity, you can see it's only available in our segregated fund. So this page really helps. It gives you the MERS, it gives you all the fund codes, and it also aligns what can I purchase in the seg fund side? What can I purchase on the RIA side? The little star that you're seeing is our momentum fund. You'll see the one pager coming up. Stellar fund. It's a great fund. The performance on this fund is amazing. How this fund works, it's under the Canadian. You can see it's under the Canadian equity category. However, it would, should not be a core holding because it's, it's a very volatile fund because it only owns 12 stocks in that fund. How it works, Louis Bourque created a computer model and it runs monthly. So every month, the fund manager, he runs this model, takes a look at, you know, where should the fund be right now? And it really looks at momentum. 
During COVID, it, you know, it had a high weighting in uh, Shopify. Right now, oil's doing well. You'll see that it's very highly weighted in oil and gas. So it's just a great fund. It's in quartile ranking for one to 15 years right now. It's it, number one rating. So you'll see that in a second. I will show you that. Just a great fund. So allow it to complement your Canadian equity. Here it is here. Again, filling your briefcase. This is a one pager we just created. It was launched last week. And it talks about the quartile rankings. This is on year to date, all the way to 15 years. It is in the quartile ranking number one. So you can see the returns, you know, year to date, I believe that's about 28%. So just a great fun. And to the right of there, you can see it's highly weighted in energy right now. 72% is weighted in energy right now. Great fun, great one pagers when you're sitting and explaining to the clients why you want that to be part of their holdings. Might just get you a couple extra returns for your total portfolio. To summarize, we have set and forget, which is our smart series funds, ease of choice, which are traditional and select portfolios, and build your own. Keep in mind, target date funds, target risk funds, and if you choose to build your own portfolio, it's important that you know that you should be rebalancing the portfolio on an annual basis. The reason for that is because let's look at this year. Canada is doing really well. You know, your Canadian equity may have grown a little bit too much. And you want to take some of that profit off and rebalance the portfolio the following year. Benefits of an RIA, again, similar to mutual funds, they have the creditor protection. You can name a beneficiary. When you name a beneficiary, it bypasses probate. Potential for guaranteed income for life. There's a lot of flexibility. There's diversification because you can choose to diversify your portfolio. You can choose to purchase the portfolios themselves. Where you, where you let the fund manager do all the diversification for you. Liquidity, very easy to cash out and professionally managed and small investment. On our site fund side, the minimum is 25 on a, on a monthly basis minimum. And on our RIA side, it's $50. So you don't need a large investment when you're going into, new, into the site funds or our RIA and to any of our portfolios. Other benefits, of course, we have guarantees, the 7575 and 75100, investor protection, which I talked about in series two, tax benefits, switches between fund, absence of medical writing, but still getting those guarantees, and the right of rescission. What that means is you have a certain amount of days, every company is different, you have a certain amount of days once you purchase it, that if you decide you want to get out of it, you can. How does it compare? Again, there's no comparison. The RIA is just a fantastic product. You can buy it. You can purchase a non-registered account and have a beneficiary. You cannot do that on a mutual fund side, which means if you have a million dollar account on the mutual fund side and your client passes away, that will be going to probate, which this is now open on public record. On the RIA or the segregated, you can put a beneficiary designation. Keep in mind the RIA are for only registered accounts Segregated, you can also use a non-registered account and put a beneficiary designation. Again, bypasses probate, creditor protection. And the lower cost, you can compete with mutual funds now with the RIA. You'll be saving your clients at least 1%. It may be your favorite choice for all your registered investments. Save on fees with the RIA. Again, the RIA has all of our 18 portfolios. So if you're looking to just sell portfolios, the RIA is a great option for our portfolios. The RIA fee difference in our portfolios, again, it's just to show you the difference here. If you take a look at the select moderate, 3.33 versus 2.5, that's a savings of 0.83, save your clients money. Here's Rosa and Serge. Rosa, she decided to take the RIA. They both, it's the Canadian statistics, they both saved 112, 295 by the age of 45, from 46 to 65 for 19 years, they're gonna contribute each the same amount of money, 3,260. Total contributions are 65,200. However, Rosa, because she chose the RIA, saved 0.5 on this investment, on her MER, on her fee. So she netted a return of 4%, Serge netted a return of 3.5, this gives her 330,000 and he only earned 305. That's a fantastic difference of $25,000 for Rosa in her investment account. And she will be able to take 10 extra trips down south. 
Preferred pricing, this is just to show you that there's many companies out there that offer preferred pricing. This one is based uh, on 250,000 investment. It just shows you that if they did not have preferred pricing, what they're saving, the incremental savings between 6250 and 4750. So many companies have a preferred pricing. Ours actually starts a little bit lower. It starts at the 50,000 and it's automatic. So once you have your clients, let's say you choose the RIA, and they have an RSP and a TFSA, and they have 30,000 in one and 50,000 in the other in the RIA, they would qualify automatically for our pricing rebate. So again, it's level one, two, and three. It all depends on how much money they have. And it also depends if they're in fixed income funds or equities. Of course, in equities, they'll have a better discount. Key takeaways are know the difference between SEG funds and RIA versus mutual funds. More money in your client's pocket by choosing RIA. Preferred pricing for accounts with 50000 or more. Now we're going to get to the compensation. This is the fun part. So you can see here that we have segregated funds and RIA. We have three series in each. So series B, series C, and series H. And then we have series E, D, and G in the RIA. You get to choose which, how you would like your commission. Do you want it up front? a higher commission and a lower trail? Do you want no commission and a higher trail? You can see here that uh, the DSCs, there are a star to it because as of June 1st, 2023, we will no longer be allowed to sell DSCs across Canada. So this is across Canada to all insurance companies, anybody selling DSCs and any DSCs period in the mutual funds as well, you will no longer be able to be selling DSC funds. Now, when you take a look at here, you can see there's chargebacks. So if you choose series B, you will get a commission of 5.2. Keep in mind, this is gross. So this is a gross commission. You'd have to look at your contract with your MGA. So this is gross and it has a three-year chargeback. The other one options, if you want, the other ones are a five-year chargeback. So that would be series H, series D and series G. Then you have a trail. You can see the trails are 0 0.5175, 0 0.45, or you can see if you didn't take an upfront commission, the trail's higher. So 1.15, 1.05. Keep those trails in mind because that's what I was talking about. That's what I will be talking about when I talk about how much money you can make. Again, we also have the no load. This is for clients who possibly sold their house and they're only gonna buy another house in six months, but they wanna park their money somewhere. You could put them in a no load, so then there's no fee for you, and there's no fee for the client if they were, if you were to cash out. Again, one big thing to note is the trailer starts in the first month. We're one of the only companies that trail starts immediately. There's some that start at 12 months, or some that start at 24, some that even start at 36. So always take a look at when does the trail start. So if you had a $20,000 deposit, you would gross commission and trails in the first year of 5.65, which means you would earn one point, sorry, $1,130 in your first year. Highest commission in the industry, 5.65. We have high low, we have trailer only, we have DSC, and the trail starts in the first month. So you can see there that the CCIR, who's the Canadian Council of Insurance Regulators, have noted that as of June 1st, 2023, we will no longer be selling the DSCs. Another bonus that we have for our loyal advisors, this is a great bonus. It's an annual bonus. It comes out, we cut off the date December 31st of each year. We do our analysis and all of our advisors who are loyal to Assumption Life, who have AUM above $2 million, receive a bonus the end of February. So it's an excellent bonus in this scenario example at the bottom. Again, this, this is a one pager, but it's for you, not, not for your clients. It's for you to be able to go calculate, okay, if I build wealth at Assumption Life, how much money can I make? So you can see that if your AUM is 8 million at the end of December 31st, you will qualify for the base amount. So there's two things going on when we calculate. There's a base amount bonus, and then there's a multiplier for your net new dollars that you bring into Assumption Life. So it would be 8 million, you times it by the 0 0.004. This advisor brought us in 1.5 million net. So again, we times it by 1.5 because it would be between 1 million and 2 million. And the bonus would be $4,800 on the last day of February. So I can tell you that I made a lot of advisors happy this February. I did a lot of, we signed quite a few checks for them. So they were pretty excited. 
Key takeaways, we pay the highest in the industry, make up 5.65 in your first year with Assumption Life. And don't forget, we have a persistency bonus for all of our loyal advisors. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you down 18 years of potential earnings. As I stated in my first presentation, this was as if you brought in the 200,000 for your first two years and you're starting to get comfortable, we're gonna increase it to 400,000 of investments for the next three years. And then the next 13 years, you're gonna be bringing in a million dollars. So let's take a look at the potential of revenue over that 18 year period. So in commissions alone, had you done that, brought in exactly what we mentioned on those uh, on those, you know, 18 years, commissions alone, you would have earned $654,000. Trail plus the 5% growth on the book, you would have earned $439,000. Then you would qualify, you can see in the sixth year, you would qualify for the persistency bonus. Now, this is assuming you're just starting with Assumption Life and have no assets with us as of today. So this is assuming you're beginning to grow the book as, it, as we had mentioned. That's a total of $1,174,000 is what you would have earned over those 18 years. Now what we wanna do, we wanna go sell your book. So what, what I did when I did the calculations to grow it to 16 million, I took into consideration those last 13 years when you're bringing in a million, you could start having withdrawals, clients need money, they need to put money in their bank account, they're going on a trip. So I took the 1 million and I brought it down to, you brought it in, however, 300,000 went out each year. So this brought your book to $16 million. Now let's go sell the book. You can see, you can sell that book for 336,000. Now at the end, that's why I said, when I said, keep in mind those higher trails, it's because usually the, the advisors will put their book in a certain trail for a certain amount of time, usually six to seven years and have the lower trail and then they'll convert it to the higher trail. So I actually sold the 16 million at a higher trail for, for um, the advisor. Again, as I mentioned, when you transition your book to an advisor, if you do a great job at your transition, 88% of your clients will stay with the new advisor. This is important, especially if you live in a small town, you're gonna to see your clients, you wanna be able to say hi when you bump into them at the grocery store, you know? So just important when you do the transition of your book, to kind of make sure you have a great smooth transition. So let's take a look at your total earnings, commission, trailer, persistency bonus, and selling your book. You have made $1.4 million on doing investments with your existing clients. Remember, we don't wanna go get new clients. It costs five times more to go get new clients. So now we're gonna take a look at Vesta. It's a short video. I'm just gonna get it set up. Keep in mind that Vesta is error-free. It automatically saves you time. You can do your application in less than 10 minutes. You can go back to the office after you've sold your life insurance policy implement your investor profile questionnaire. It will give you the two options to choose from. You're gonna see that in the video. It will give you your two options that you should offer to your clients. Also, it has the built-in T23 so that when you start getting comfortable with investments and the clients say to you, I have 200,000 at the competition, you're gonna be able to go and move that in to Assumption Life by using the T2033 in Vesta. And don't forget Vesta is a web-based platform. So that's excellent. So let me just get the video started here. It's going to just take a second to download. Okay. I'm just going to X this out. So you'll start to see that uh, here's the video. It's just going to show you how it starts, completing and submitting an application. And then I'll go through it a little bit after the video is done. So here you're going to put in your username and your password. That's your username that you usually log into Assumption Life with. You log in, as soon as you're logged in, you're gonna be able to choose which account you wanna open. This is what we call the dashboard. So you can see she just clicked on uh, application. Here, you're gonna be setting up the application form. You can see here on Vesta right now, the individual in group, group is faded out. If you do group, this is when you go to a company and there's a lot of employees and they wanna set up a group plan. I can tell you that we're hoping to have group on Vesta within the next quarter. So probably we're looking at probably mid-July, end of July. However, you will be able to sign up group members. So currently it's only for individual. Is it a new client? Is it an existing client? If it's an existing client, it is really gonna save you time. 
Because what happens with an existing client, it's going to pre-populate all the fields for you. I had an advisor who loves Vesta. He went in, opened an RSP, took him about 10 minutes to put the application in, and clicked as well a TFSA. It took him about 10 minutes for his application for the TF for the RSP and about three minutes for the TFSA because it's all pre-populated. You can see to the right-hand side, here's your navigation tool. So this is, it, it lets you know where you're at in the application. You're gonna see as we're moving with the video, these will lighten up in light blue. It'll go to annuitant information, beneficiary, limited trading authority, uh, investor profile, uh, investor information. Here's your investor profile questionnaire to get your risk tolerance. So I'm just gonna continue with the video. So I just kind of wanted to show you how it's set up. Again, we created Vesta, so everything is at your fingertips. You don't need to go looking for forms. All the locked-in accounts are there. So if it's a Saskatchewan locked-in account, you would click on that. It will pre-populate the forms for you. The other thing we did when I tell you to build, uh, you fill, fill your briefcase, under Documents here, under Document Center, all the marketing one-pagers are there for you. The dashboard, you will see, show, we will be showing you the dashboard in the video. The dashboard saves all of your clients. So let's say in three years, compliance come back, you put in a 100,000 account, it's worth 85,000, the client's complaining, compliance calls you and says, you know, you put the client, they're upset, they said they, they didn't, didn't want to take on any risk, you will be able to save the investor profile que questionnaire, and everything is saved in your dashboard. So when you click on dashboard, you're actually going to only see your clients. Again, we have practice accounts that I'll be sending you so that you'll be able to go into Vesta and practice. Let's continue the play button here. Choosing individual. You can see here, this is where you choose your comp. So, you know, what are we purchasing? We're purchasing the RIA. It's an RSP. I want the 75-100 guarantee. So it's, it's asking you exactly what you want. You can see Investa, all these little questionnaires. What they do is, let's say the client says, what does that mean? 75-100, you click on the little questionnaire. It will guide you to answer your client for what does that mean, the guarantees. Down at the bottom is going to ask you uh, your compensation options. You can see no load, high trail, deferred. So you, you can see that in the moment here. There we go. So you can see no load, deferred, and high trailer. Is this a new client or existing client? Now they're pre-populating client's name, their address, their date of birth. Hit next. You can see how in light blue, the annuitant information is now highlighted in light blue to the right. We're now filling in all the information. And you'll see as we go through as we go through this video, the light blue will continue to keep going down. Address, marital status, social insurance number, English, French, what's their phone number? This is very important, the email here, because that's the email that we're going to be sending the electronic forms to be signed by your client. This is why I said if you can just get that investor profile questionnaire, you tell your client, I'm going back to the office, I'm going to analyze this. Tomorrow, I'll get back to you. Expect an email from me with my recommendations on what you should purchase. You, my, my thing is probably pick up the, client, the phone, call your clients, let them know what you analyze and what fund you suggest, and then send the electronic signature. You do not even have to go back to the client's house and the application is completed. It's all electronic signature. So now we're going to the primary beneficiaries. You can choose a state if you wish. I don't know why anybody would want to do that because it goes to probate if, if, if you choose a state. And again, on this platform, you can choose 10 beneficiaries. Again, you can see the percentage and must total. And this is just, this is what I was telling you on the little questions. If you designate beneficiaries as revocable, you will be able to change. So it just kind of gives you, uh, anytime you click on the question, it will give you information that you can talk to your clients about. So now we're going to the limited trading authorization. Again, this is so that you can trade on the client's accounts. There's limits. Okay, there's limits of what you can trade. The little question will show your clients what, what are the limits. And it's basically so that you don't have to get their signature every time they want to do a transfer, if they want to do a deposit. And I believe the limit's 25000 for for withdrawals. And again, type of transactions. This is what it tells you what you can do. I acknowledge, you agree, and then you press continue. So you can maneuver it either with the continue on the bottom or the side navigation tool, whichever is more comfortable for you. Again, this is the investor profile questionnaire. So we're starting to ask, what's your annual income? What's your net worth? What's your investment objective? What's your time horizon? And then at the bottom here where it says select your investment option. Yes, I want to complete the investor profile questionnaire. Some advisors use their own questionnaire. It's up to you. It's your choice. 
Many of our advisors use the, the built-in questionnaire just for compliance purposes. So now you can see we're still in the investor information. She continues, she's gonna do the questionnaire. She's still doing all the agree, disagree. So this is this client's choosing the target date funds. This is where I was showing you that once you do the profile questionnaire, as you can see, you, the, uh, Vesta will give you two options, option one or option two. And then you can go back to your client. I've analyzed your, your investor profile questionnaire. My recommendation is that you choose the Smart Series 2050. Are you comfortable with that? They say yes. And then you start the pack or you start the transfer. This is where you're gonna, you can choose your own funds. If you're a person that likes to choose your own funds, this person chose the Smart Series and added, I believe she's gonna add 10% of that top Momentum Canadian Equity Fund. It's a great fund. Again, these are all the documents. That's all the marketing material. Information folders there. When you sell investments, you should be handing out the information folder to your clients. So it's in the document center and you can print it. You can also email it to your clients as well. Special instructions, if you want to do a lump sum, if you're going to do it by external loan, we have loans with National Bank and B2B, so depending who you want to do the loan with. And then at the bottom, we have special instructions, so we're, we have, uh, you, you could just put in a uh, loan with National Bank, funds will be coming from National Bank, something like that. Periodic pre-authorized debit, this is basically your $50, you can do weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever you want. And then you can click the button for a T2033. She just clicked it, the transfer from another institution. So then here's your bank account information. You upload the check. Yes, I authorize you to be able to take money out of my bank account in order to do the pre-authorized contribution. So I'm just going to press pause in the interest of time. So you get the gist of you know, how this works. And when you get to the end of the application, What's going to happen? It's going to ask for um, where do you want the signatures to go? And it's actually going to show the email. So just make sure that your email is correct, as well as your client's email. Here she's doing the T2033. It basically pre-populates everything. You put the amount, you put the account number. It's going to download. It downloads the T2033. There it is there. You upload it into Vesta and you fax it out. Currently, you're going to just, and then it asks if it's type of sale. Is it in person? Is it distant selling? Currently, for the T2033, you're responsible to fax it. Assumption Life will follow up in 20 business days if we have not received the, um, the money from the relinquishing institution. Print and sign, you can choose e-signature that will go directly to their inbox. You can choose print and sign. So we had advisors that wanted this option because sometimes they're at areas you know, up north, there's no Wi-Fi, they're in the woods at a, at a warehouse and they can't, they, there's no Wi-Fi. So they can choose the print and sign application at the at the office before they leave. So that is something that we did implement. Again, if you do preview application, once you print, you cannot go back to e-sign. So this is where it's gonna go. It's gonna go to, uh, if she chooses e-signature, in this case, it was Claudette, and then to a client. So that is Vesta. I'm just gonna, for, for the interest of time. So then it tells you at the end, when you submit it, it tells you that you, your application has been successfully submitted. We'll contact you if we have any questions. So that is Vesta. Then you go back to the dashboard, your application is there and it says in progress. When we start to fax the T2033, so this is coming soon, hopefully in the next quarter, we will be faxing the T2033s for our advisors as well as following up. However, if you're looking to say, you know, how many T2033s do I have out there? There will be an added button here. You're gonna be able to click on it and it's gonna show you all the T2033s that you currently have that are out. So that's Vesta, and we also have the facts, the FAQs, and everything. So in a nutshell, that's Vesta. And let me just give me a second here. I'm just going to get out of here. I will be forwarding you the practice account. That's the username and password. Please don't go in live with your username and password because it's actually live, and you're submitting stuff to Assumption Life and your clients if there's an email. So this is the practice account. Please do not put any confidential information in our practice account because all advisors across Canada use the same practice account. But you can go in there. It's not live. You can go take a look at the questionnaires. What's the information? We also have YouTube links. 
you'll be get you'll be receiving all this information so you'll be able to look at it we do have earning more money with Vesta. It started April 25th. It will go till June 15th. You can earn more money if you submit one application. This is the 10,000 or more. Or if you submit a pack of 100 or more, 10,000 or more, one application is 50. Three or more is 100. Five or more is $150. And then a pack is $25 for one. If you submit five more, you're going to get $50. If you submit uh, sorry, if you submit three more, it's going to be 50. If you submit five more, it's going to be 75. So take advantage of it. Submit the key takeaways are submit your applications in just 10 minutes, error free platform, and earn more with Vesta until June 15th. Easy process. This is what it looks like. Meet with your clients to sell your life insurance sale. Leave behind the investor profile questionnaire and ask your clients to please fill that out for you so that you can start saving for them for their retirement. Close your insurance sale, because we want you to close your insurance sale. Then at that closing or the delivery of the policy, ask for the completed profile questionnaire. You already have their ID, you already have their voided check. Determine the pack amount or the deposit amount. Maybe they want to do an RSP lump sum February 15th. Go back to the office and input the investor profile questionnaire along with all your client information and submit it electronically. You just completed your sale. Once both of you sign, so the client has signed and the advisor has signed, you're done, you receive your commission and you move on to your next client. Just a note, when you sign the uh, VESTA application, don't just wait for your clients to sign. You should sign immediately because as soon as your, sign, your clients sign, you will get an email confirming that all signatures have been received. Filling your briefcase with our one-pagers, I can tell you our advisors love our one-pagers. They use them. I have one advisor, the one to the far right where it says uh, saving for retirement is as easy as hitting the snooze button. That's basically, it's like a door, door card. So he leaves those behind and does mail drops with them because at the bottom, you can put your name, your phone number and everything on there. So start saving for the Canadians. We absolutely need it. Fill your briefcase with all the tools you need. Again, this is our investor toolkit. This is the URL at the top here, assumption.ca investment toolkit. Everything at your fingertips from VESTA to fund returns, the strategy guide, which is the investor profile questionnaire, the calculators, RSP loans, everything is at that one URL. You will find everything at your fingertips. Going beyond selling investments in the series one, we covered clients' best interests, your revenue potential, retaining your clients, cross-selling, time management, a win-win holistic approach. In series two, we did addressing your financial needs of your clients. We covered securities other alternatives, types of accounts, asset allocation, fee structures, and guaranteed options. And in this one, series three is how to get started. It's easy sales process, SEG versus RIA, portfolio solutions, compensation, tools for your briefcase, building your own wealth, and VESTA. Again, we have the BDMs across Canada to help you, and you will get these slides as well with all the BDMs and all their contact information. We have inside sales that help you. Again, Patrick supports Atlantic Canada and Western Canada. Sally supports Quebec and Ontario. Put in and Jeremy, they support LEA, which is our life insurance platform, and Vesta, which is our investment platform. So any questions you may have, they're there to help you. And of course, we have our head office team, which is our internal department, investments and retirement. You can contact them at any time. We've got tech support. We've got sales support. We have Vesta support. And of course, don't forget to go visit the Advisor Corner website where everything is at your fingertips. I would like to thank you for being here with us for the last three series. I'm going to hand it back over to Graham because I believe Graham was looking into the questions to see if there's any questions. Uh, I know your, your team's going to be in the follow-up. So what I would encourage everybody to do is actually write down questions, take the notes, um, and, and be prepared for a proper discussion with whoever calls. Um, that's the whole point of this. I think we've had three great sessions. I think we've really, um, but you provided a roadmap for people to start. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere unless you start. Uh, and I think um, if you do it on a simple basis, we're not going to get overcomplicated. You've got the product there. To, the, product, the portfolios are built. You know, the, the, I like that investment. Per, per, uh, my tongue's not working today. The investment profile questionnaire. 
um, that works nicely. It's seamless to, to, to an application, which is even easier. So if we keep it simple, the process is easy. It should be something to do. I, I noted down some comments when, when you were speaking. I think the very first slide you showed is really, really important. Uh, basically, the, the graph going up to the right-hand side. And I would compare that right now with what's going on in the marketplace. We get lots of clients that are kind of scared. I don't want to engage. Um, let's just think about somebody climbing the mountain. We are focusing on somebody climbing a mountain with a yo-yo. We're watching that yo-yo going up and down. We're not watching the progress that person's climbing up the mountain towards the end goal. So, you know, it's a great time to get in. The target date works perfect with, um, with goal setting. So if we are sitting down with clients, um, thinking about the future is needing certain amounts by certain dates or certain significant events in their lifetime. Those just work perfectly for that. Um, the two stats you gave, which are really quite scary, and I hope for the audience pays attention to that. 45 to 64 age group, 30, 32% of those people have no savings whatsoever. That's our duty as advisors to have those conversations. It's not the fact that maybe they will or maybe they won't. That's our duty to have the fiduciary, the fiduciary duty we have to, to bring that to their attention and help them, guide them to the future. And I think they'll be a lot more thankful. Um, it'll help trust, it'll help everything with the relationship that an advisor and the client has with those difficult conversations. We can't have 58% of people relying on, on government pensions. You know, uh, the, the guaranteed income supplement is exactly that. That's a supplement to a minimum lifestyle. We don't want normal Canadians having that in the retirement. So it is so important to have these discussions. Um, the RIA is obviously um, a great intro up, low cost, you know, and again, you get paid for it. You get paid well for it. That's, uh, that's something we should recognize. We can't hide from that. We don't do this for charitable reasons. We're doing this, we're running a business, we're doing great work for people and you deserve to get paid for that. Um, rule threshold, fantastic. I mean, that really gets the, gets the price savings there. Loyalty bonus, and really important again for everybody, the income potential for building this group of business, that's something we don't think about. We're building a business in addition to the insurance business that many people have. Um, the, the, the average age of an advisor is older. And at some point, that book of business is really important, the successions there and the means and the, the revenue to come back out for all that hard work. So that loyalty slide is really, really cool. I hope more, most people take that, print it off and use that as a roadmap for the future. Two last points. Pack sets up. Uh, let's get the packs going. It's a simple conversation. It get things. It's back to basics. It's keeping it simple. Let's get people talking about this and get them started. Um, and it's a great time to get that happening in the market. The sale is on, people. Um, just remember, and every time there's a transaction or we see red, that means people have been selling and there's a buyer on the other end. We need to be the buyers. We want clients to be the buyers when the market's on sale. And how better to do it than a pack or lump sum that we pack into the market even. So uh, those are my comments. I know we're over time. Thank you, Claudette. Thank you for the team for putting this together. I think we got a lot out of it. And hopefully everybody on, everybody's still on the call. It's fantastic. I love this. Um, Alex, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap no, up? Well said, uh, Graham. Uh, as always, and Claudette, a great job. And again, once again, uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, we will follow up. Uh, so again, thank you for your partnership. And, and please have a look at uh, Assumption Life uh, Wealth Products. So, so thanks again to everybody. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Make sure you look at the follow-up. We have a couple prizes coming up. So try to start using Vesta because it starts counting as of today. Thank you.